So for the next talk, the next talk is by Sh Shane Cannon. So I will switch my name tag and become Shane now. So Shane, Shane's in Germany, and actually I owe him because he gave my Python talk last time. So. And I, I did look at the slides, <laughs> at least ahead of time. So, all right, so I'll give you a quick intro to, con so Shifter is about containers, and it's about running containers on HPC, on our, on Core A's. So I'll give you a quick intro to, to containers, and then I'll talk about what Shifter is and how it's different from Docker. <laughs> and then we'll walk through, uh, it's just because I'm not looking at it, right? Uh, I'll walk through the use of, of, of Shifter and, and Docker. Actually, I wonder whether or not uh, this aspect ratio is worse for it or something. Um, anyhow, we'll go on. Intro to containers and shifter. So how many people have used Docker? Are you getting tired of raising your hand? OK, so Docker is a container technology. OK, so um, basically, uh, it's about build, ship, run. So it's not, not like VMs. You don't like build this virtual machine with all this software in it. You have this kind of really much more lightweight kind of image where um, you can install whatever software you want, and then you can move that thing around, and you can run it anywhere where the Docker stuff is supported. Um, so your build images capture your applications and what they all depend on. You can create a file that actually kind of automates the build process called a Docker file. You can push that around to different registries in different places, either Docker, uh, the cloud, or a hosted registry, or your own private registry. You can share these images with other users um, and pull down images and, and execute them. Um, okay, so they kind of bottle up all the dependencies, all of the all of the software that you need, all the libraries you need to run an application and the application too. Okay, um, so there's applications for reproducibility and, and stuff like that. What's inside an image? Well, there's a file system. So there's a directory tree. There's a base Linux operating system, a Linux distribution that you pick, stuff for building software uh, and running code, your code, sometimes data, but probably don't put too much in there. Um, probably configuration stuff is what, what he means there. Um, also runtime settings, so environment variables could be set inside of a container. What working directory you want to start from, that can be set there as well. How you actually, what command to run by default and all of the arguments that go with it, that's also specified. Um, other things not relevant to Shifter. Oh, okay. Um, you can uh, you can manage the. There's kind of a networking component of of Docker, so different Docker containers can talk to each other over a network, and then who's actually running. All right. Um, so this talk is about Shifter, but it's related to Docker. What's the difference between Docker and Shifter, and why do we have this thing on Cori called Shifter that we run? Why don't we just run Docker? Well. Um, Docker has this all or nothing security model. So um, if you ran Docker on Core A, you would basically have system level privilege, privileges. So you'd be like root on a supercomputer, um, which isn't good. Um, it also assumes that there's a local disk and like our compute nodes don't have a local disk. So that kind of doesn't make sense. Um, Docker doesn't play nicely with batch systems. I think that that's really just a statement about I don't really know what that means, but I, I think that <laughs> I think that maybe that's just what it means on face value. I don't really know what Shane's getting at with that one, um, but we 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 made sure that Shifter plays nice with our batch system, I guess. Um, Docker typically requires a much more modern kernel than a lot of people are running, so that kind of places a burden on on system administrators. Um, and then complexity, real Docker would add would be a lot more complex than running Shifter. We've taken a lot of the complexity out of Docker to create Shifter. Shifter was this research and development effort here at NERSC, so it was, it was invented here. Uh, it was put together with Cray to kind of support these kind of workloads where people say, hey, I, I, I don't like your software stack. I want to have my own. Is there a way for me to have a VM or something like that? Um, there are multiple places that are run Cray systems that are, are using Shifter, so we're not the only one, and Cray supports Shifter, so it's not just us doing it. Um, Shifter addresses security issues, the, some of the security issues I talked about on the, on the previous slide. And it also um, uh, is intermeshed with, uh, with, uh, with a Slurm uh, workload manager. But the, the workflow for developers or for people who want to use Shifter is you create a Docker container, and then you ship it to a registry, and then you pull it down onto Cori, and there it's 
there you're using shifter infrastructure to run it. So it's kind of got a runtime piece, which is the shifter piece. Okay, so why will you like containers in shifter? Okay, you'll be able to, the thing that I like is I can pick the Linux distribution, I can pick all the libraries, I can pick how I, how I set up the whole software stack and I can stick it in a container and I know what I did and if somebody on Cori say changes what the software stack looks like, I don't care, right? I know what's in there, I can always run it. But there's a number of other things that people may like. So, um, of course, you can develop application on your desktop, you can run it in the container sometimes, and then you can ship it to Cori and run it there too. Um, it also lets you solve your dependency problems the way you like to do it without writing lots of tickets to us. Um, of course, I just mentioned running the Linux operating system of your choice sometimes actually matters for performance for some people, so um, you, can, uh, you can make a choice that works for you best. Um, and in some cases, it improves application performance. So I mentioned before in the Python talk stuff about shifter and why that's the best choice. That's what we're getting at. Uh, reproducibility, your whole build is there in a Docker file and you can share the whole stack with other people. Okay, so I think I talked about reproducibility. Portability, it runs wherever you can run shifter. Reduction of effort, uh, compile takes 10 hours, just do it once and share it with everybody. So instead of everybody in your group having to build your application software, you just give them the um, name of the shifter image, basically. Um, and if there, of course, if the library isn't there on the, on the native system, you can just put it into your container. All right, so um, I would say one thing that, that people probably need to get used to with, with shifter and Docker is that once you push your image to shifter, it's, it's baked, it's done. You can't get into your shifter image and then like do yum install whatever you forgot. So that's a little bit of a complication that makes the loop a little bit more open. Uh, but generally, I, um, um, the way that Docker works is that if you just add a thing at the end, it doesn't re redo the whole build. And so it's not as, not as slow as it sounds. All right, so shifter in action, how does it work? So this is on your laptop, or this is, we're pretending this is Shane's laptop. Um, you create this file called a Docker file. Its name is just Docker file with a capital D. And what you, there's um, these verbs, and you need to learn some verbs if you haven't used Docker yet. Um, those are those things in all caps on the left-hand side. But basically, it's all just Unix stuff that you want to run, okay? So for Ubuntu, the thing to install packages is apt-get, so you do apt-get update app get install all the compilers and all the libraries and all that stuff. You can copy your application directly into the container while it's being built and then you do make. Okay, so you're, while you're sitting there, this is running, make is running, and then when it's all done, you have this image that has your application in it. Okay, so the build step is the, this thing down here, sorry, uh, here, so this is the build step and then this actually pushes it to some repository somewhere. Okay. All right, how do you actually use the image on Cori? The first thing you have to do, since now it's up in this registry, you have to pull it down to Cori. So that's the shifter image pull. It's not Docker pull, okay? Shifter image pull, image name, and then you can submit a batch job that's got this guy in the header, okay? And the cool thing is that um, the image lands on the compute node before the job starts, so you don't pay for that. Well, you're not waiting for the, the shifter pull to, to, to complete while your job is starting. You can actually change which shifter image you're using in the job, but then you will take the hit of the shifter pull. Okay? All right, but it's, it's fairly straightforward. In fact, I don't think module load, I think he should have taken module load shifter off of this example, but basically it will get shorter. The only thing you need to do in your job script that's a little bit different from like just running a regular application is the shifter prefix. Okay? If you don't do that, it's going to go. I, I don't know what my app app is. There's no such thing. But this is the path inside the container that you want to run. Okay. All right. How do you use Shifter with MPI? Um, Shifter has this built-in support for MPI. But that doesn't mean that every Shifter image can use MPI. You actually have to have the MPI libraries inside of your container because presumably you want to build an application against some MPI library, right? You have to have something there to build against. So that means that you need to either get uh, a shifter image that has the MPI libraries in them already, 
uh, MPI libraries in them already, or you need to build them yourself. And all you need to do there is grab a relatively recent impitch, configure, make, make, install inside your Docker file, and it'll be something that you can compile against. So for people who might use MPI for Pi, for instance, the thing that I do pretty often is um, grab a grab impitch from the web, build it into the uh, Docker image or Docker container, and then and then do my, my MPI for Pi build against that. Okay, then at runtime, this cool magic thing happens. Your shifter image gets started up. And because, um, because the, the, the library is compatible with what we have running on Cori, it just kind of swaps out the back end. Okay, so then you're using the Cray and Pitch. All right, so it figures all of that stuff out for you at runtime. You don't have to rebuild the container, and it actually is completely like running a regular old MPI application natively, same performance. Um, I think this is what it looks like. Um, we've been building up shifter images that have uh, components that people frequently want, like MPI, so here the first line is the, so we have, we have a few images that you can use that have commonly requested components in them. Um, so here's one called NERSC slash Ubuntu MPI that has all the MPI stuff already compiled into it. So then if you have hello world, you can come along and start with that image, stick hello world in there and it's got like, you know, uh, MPI in it and then hello from rank blah, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and then, then you just compile it against that. You just have to know where it is in the, in the image. Um, then you just run this guy with shifter image pull um, and you can Actually, you can also run it, um, why does it say salic? But anyway, you can, you can download this and you can use this. You can build, build against pre-canned uh, pre kind of images and use those for your, um, for your MPI-enabled applications. Okay, so I mentioned before, you wanna be careful about when you run a large-scale Python application, if you have like a 1,000 MPI ranks or even like a few hundred MPI ranks, um, to be careful about what file system your Python stack is on. And I said that the very best choice was Shifter, which isn't a file system. It's this container system. The reason that that's true is that your entire Python stack is self-contained inside the image. The image lives on the RAM disk on the compute node. So looking through that to find all your stuff is really fast because it's, it's the RAM disk. And the other thing is, is that there's none of that involvement of that metadata server on the parallel file system, like on GPFS or Lustre. So there's not some separate guy out there whose job is to keep track of where everything is. That's inside the container. So you, at most you have like a few ranks asking the container, hey, where's, where's, where are all these files? So all the metadata lookup is localized to the, to the compute node. So it's not involving the network, it's not involving this metadata server. So it completely cuts out that middleman and everybody doesn't care about where everybody else is. You can even make shifter applications do that lookup faster because when you build the container, your root, and there's this little trick for if you have a lot of shared object libraries in your root, you can run this thing called ldconfig, which will cache where all the symbol, where all the, where all the shared object libraries are ahead of time, and that can shave off maybe 10 or 15% in terms of load time, okay? All right. Um, Differences between, I think that the last few slides are gonna be just a few things to keep in mind about Shifter, uh, Shifter versus Docker. Um, in Shifter, processes that run from your Shifter container run as you, they don't run as root. Okay, so that's a little bit different from when you run Docker on your laptop, you go in, it's probably root, um, but they don't allow that on Cori. Um, images are mounted read-only, like I said, so once you've built it, it's, it's baked, and uh, to make changes to it, you have to push a new image. Home directories, global file systems, all of that's automatically mounted. So when you do, um, like uh, you just get into an interactive job and you do shifter, the only thing that, that you see change is like the prompt changes from like one symbol to another, but all your file systems are still there. You can still see home directory, scratch and all that. Um, some handling of special Docker file directives aren't yet supported, but I, I, I'm not really sure what those are. Um, I'm not worried about that. Um, other things to, to think about, ah, there are these neat features like this, uh, this way to, to mount volumes. Um, you can map a directory into another location in your image so you can do that to scratch. Um, people, are, people use that to do this per node writable cache. So on a node, you can have kind of more temporary space, but it's really just scratch underneath. 
This is, this is documented on the website as well. I don't see the details here. And then we, we do run a private registry. So you can push your images to our private registry and then pull them down. So you don't have to put them on Docker Hub or whatever. If you don't want to put them there, you can put them here and then only people here can see them. Um, anybody know what spin is? Right, it's a it's a container, yeah. So it's a hey, so it's a it's a it's a container infrastructure here for running services outside of HPC. Uh, but it's Docker, it's Docker based as well. But um, we can skip over that. There's they're not the same thing. Okay. Um, what do people use it for? Uh, for like I said, scaling up these kind of massive Python applications. Here's an example of one. This is a simulation of a code uh, from a code called Toast. Um, this was this was this ran on all of the Cori KNL nodes. I think pretty soon after we had them, um, and that that application is a layer of of Python, and then a bunch of C++ code underneath for uh, high performance. Um, and what they do is they, they calculate the cosmic microwave background and all of these different um, frequencies and they simulate weather and different sites and things like that. Um, so they were able to simulate 50,000 instances of their telescope. <clears throat> they do like 50,000 realizations of this CMB stuff and they used all of the Cori KNL partition. Without it, they would have never been able to start the application up but they were able to start the application up in about 60 seconds this way. So an MPI in it that takes 60 seconds on the whole machine isn't so bad. Okay. Where you can learn more, there's documentation, which is probably pretty good, but not as good as the, shift, as the Python documentation, because I didn't write this. But um, if, you have, if you have easy shifter questions, I can probably handle them. Okay? Questions? Yes. Oh, nice. Yeah, but if you really want to know how to, if you want to really get good at building Docker images, the best place to go is, um, oh, right there, is the how to get started with Docker stuff. Okay. So that is a thing that users, uh, yet another thing that users kind of have to learn in order to do stuff, is you've got to learn a little bit about Docker in order to use Shifter. But it isn't, it's not that bad to get started, I, I found. Okay. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's dash v and then the path. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>